Now that Radio Master have released their new trainer modules, we can now have wireless head tracking on any Radio Master radio. If you don't have a spare module bay, then don't worry, I have a solution for you as well. In the first example, you will need either a nano or full JR trainer module depending on your radio. You will also need two small Express LRS receivers. I'm using two of the RadioMaster RP2 receivers. However, the Beta FPV Lite receivers are even more slimline and only $9 from AliExpress. You will need an Arduino Nano 33BLE board. Get the one with the code ABX00030 in the name. You will also need a 6x6 push button. I'll link to everything that I've used in the video description. On the trainer module, remove the four screws and solder the receiver to the provided connector. Red goes to the 5 volt, black goes to ground, and yellow goes to TX, which will output as SBUS later on. Plug in the connector, put the screws back in, and slot the module into your radio. If you're using the full-size JR module, there are two SBUS connectors. The one on the left is for the boxer, and the one on the right is for the TX16S. On the back of the Arduino board, I've bridged the VBUS pins, which sends the 5 volt power from the USB connector to the 5 volt pad on the Arduino board. This can be temporary or permanent, which I will explain later. Take your other receiver and solder it to the 5 volt ground TX and RX on the Arduino board, remembering that the TX from the receiver goes to the RX on the Arduino board and the RX from the receiver goes to the TX on the Arduino board. Solder one side of the button to the D2 pad on the Arduino board and the other to the ground pad on the Arduino board. It doesn't matter which way around you get it on the button, but they run diagonally in the way that the legs sort of curve around, so you do have to get that right. We can now plug the Arduino board into a computer via a USB micro lead and your receiver should power up along with the Arduino board. Wait until the LED on the receiver flashes quickly after about 60 seconds and then connect to the Express LRS Wi-Fi hotspot on your computer. Open the Express LRS configurator and turn on expert mode. Select the latest target, in this case Radio Master 2.4 GHz and the RP2 receiver. We want a binding phrase different than your models if you are already using Express LRS for your plane. In this case, I'm using HT and DRC for head tracker and DRC. Now this is the clever part. Tick use a receiver as transmitter. This is going to let us transmit the head tracking data to the receiver in the trainer module with express LRS range and low latency. Build the firmware and flash it using the web interface by typing the IP address 10.0.01. Once you've saved the settings, download the Head Tracker Project GUI to your computer. The first thing you need to do is to update the firmware to the latest on the Arduino board. And to do this, you need to press the boot button on the Arduino board and then make sure that you select the Arduino Nano 33BLE board. Once that's done, go to the UART page and select CRSF as the output. When you do this, the LED on the receiver will go out and it won't go into Wi-Fi mode anymore. This is normal as it's now acting as a transmitter. If you want to get Wi-Fi back, you just simply turn CRSF to off in the head tracker configurator, but there's no real need to do that after this point. And you also want to make sure that Bluetooth is disabled, as in this instance, we're not using it. Cliff now recommends that you don't calibrate the magnetometer due to drift issues, so I've left it off in this instance. However, I use the magnetometer in my Bluetooth setup video, and it works perfect with no drift at all, so that's something you'll have to experiment with yourself. You want to set the channels that you want the head tracker to send out to your radio. In my case, channel 7 and 8 for tilt and pan, and then save the settings.
You can enable roll if you want to use this with the GM3 gimbal or a different pan, tilt and roll gimbal. But I usually just use pan and tilt. Unplug the Arduino board from the computer and boot up your radio. Next, go into the model page and scroll down to the trainer option and select trainer as S bus. This option was added to Edge TX a couple of years ago, but if you don't see it, then you'll need to update Edge TX. This will power up the receiver that we installed in the trainer module earlier. Wait for it to go into Wi-Fi mode after about 60 seconds and again go into your computer and connect to the Express LRS Wi-Fi hotspot. Open the Express LRS configurator and again select the latest target. Choose the same bind phrase as we did with the transmitter but make sure that you uncheck use receiver as a transmitter because we want it as a receiver this time. Build the firmware and flash it using the web interface by typing the IP address 10.0.01 again. Now, when we go into the configurator page, we want to change the protocol from CRSF to SBUS, as this is what the trainer module is expecting. Once that's saved, plug in your Arduino board using a micro USB power source. It can be still from the computer at this point. And then turn on your radio and the receiver will bind automatically. Trainer connected. If you don't turn your radio on and the Arduino board on within 60 seconds of each other, the receiver on the module side will go into Wi-Fi mode. You can turn Wi-Fi interval off in the configurator so it never goes into Wi-Fi mode again because once this is set up, we should never need to turn Wi-Fi on again. However, the RP2 receiver has no physical button, so you would have to bind to it with a radio to turn Wi-Fi back on, or get a pair of tweezers on the boot pad, but that is very fiddly. As long as you turn on the power of your radio and the head tracker together within 60 seconds, then you won't run into any problems anyway, or you can just reboot the radio if you have taken too long for some reason. Trainer connected. In the mixer page, set up two channels, in this case channel 7 and channel 8, like I set up in the Head Tracker GUI configurator, and set the source as TR7 and TR8, which is trainer channel 7 and trainer channel 8. I've also added a switch to both of them so you can disable the head tracker which will make your pan and tilt system default to center when it is not active. Now if we go into the channel monitor page and flip the switch you will see channel 7 and channel 8 move when I move the Arduino board. Pressing the button that I added will center the head tracker, which is important because we don't always sit or stand in the same direction every time we fly. And you might want to fine adjust your head where center is and you simply press that button and you usually only have to do it the once each flight. In this instance, I designed a 3D printed case for the DJI Goggles 2 that I've contoured around the faceplate. You can remove the torque screw and replace it with a longer M2 screw or simply use double-sided tape. When powered up, the Goggles 2 outputs 5 volts from its USB-C connector, so I've put a short L-shaped USB cable with a micro adapter on the end to power it from there. You do lose the ability to use video out with this method, but the Arduino Nano 33 BLE doesn't have a 5 volt out to power the receiver independently. So if you want a head tracker that has a larger voltage range with a built-in 5 volt back, then the DTQSYS head tracker can do that and it's supported by the head tracker GUI, but it's a lot more bulky than the Arduino Nano 33 BLE solution. Once everything is working, you can attach the head tracker to the PC anytime. I would suggest that you play around with the gain so that you don't have to fully look backwards to get a full pan, or fully look up and down to get the full tilt movement, but that's down to your personal preference. 
If all of this is a bit much for you, I have a feeling that the XF robot head tracker is using this exact same method, but it's sending the signal directly out to the model rather than to the transmitter. And they're fairly cheap, so I've ordered one to try for hopefully a more simple solution with less soldering. If like me and you mostly fly head tracking with the goggles V1 or V2, the best option I found is to buy the Digi adapter from British Drone Industries. In this instance, you wouldn't bridge the V-Bus pad and instead you would connect two wires, one to the VIN and one to the ground pad on the Arduino board with a couple of spare pins left over from the Arduino board and then connect it to the British Drone Industries adapter, which is meant for an analog receiver, but it outputs five volts on the bottom pin. So we can power the Arduino 33BLE that way. And then I use a clip-in 3D printed case along with a hole for the same button. So I'll include the 3D printed parts for that in the video description as well as for the goggle too. The RP2 receiver transmits at around 10 to 17 milliwatts when flashed as a transmitter. Thanks to Deadbyte from the ExpressLRS Discord for this information. So there's enough range for wireless head tracking and the right amount of power not to interfere with the transmitter to your model. It also means that it doesn't draw too much current from your power source or get too hot. There are some receivers that can be flashed as a transmitter and can output up to 100 milliwatts. These have PA in their specs, short for power amplifiers, and LNA, short for low noise amplifiers, such as the RP3 and the RP4 TD. As we're using these receivers as transmitters in a standalone manner, there's no way to alter the power output via a Lua script. So for the case of a wireless head tracker to the radio, it's best to stick to low power non-PA LNA receivers unless you want to attach the receiver direct to the model and bypass the radio. So what if your module bay isn't free? For example, I'm currently using Crossfire rather than Express LRS to my model because up until now, I've been using the internal Bluetooth trainer that comes with the FR Sky X90 2019 transmitter, which is great, but the Bluetooth range is poor and there is some latency with it as well. The battery bay, on the X9D 2019 isn't big enough either for the power that we require now with Crossfire and Express LRS. So I've been so keen to move to Radio Master and now I can with this solution. So most Radio Master radios have at least one spare auxiliary port. The TX16S has two. You'll have to take the back of the radio off, but the install is the same as the trainer module. Locate the auxiliary port and then connect an Express LRS 5 volt receiver to the 5 volt pad of the auxiliary port and then the ground and the TX will go to the RX pad. The only difference here is on the receiver side, you need to set the protocol to inverted SBUS instead of SBUS. And then we can enable the auxiliary port as an SBUS trainer under the hardware tab in the radio settings page and it will work exactly the same and it will free up your module bay at the same time. The TX16S has a tab for each auxiliary port that will allow you to turn the power on and off to whichever device you have got connected to it, in this case an Express LRS receiver. So for example, if you have got a model that doesn't have wireless head tracking, then you can turn the power off to the receiver when it's not in use. Note that on some radios, when the receiver is connected to an auxiliary port, the receiver will always be powered on. You could add a hardware switch on your radio so that it powers the receiver on and off if you want that option. The GX12 uses a 5-pin 1.25-pitch JST connector, but a 4-pin will still fit as that's all we need for the receiver. 
The box's 4-pin JST BLE port acts as an auxiliary when not compiled for Bluetooth. The TX12 Mark II is not supported by the SBOS Trainer module, but the Mark II board for the TX12 does have an auxiliary port via header pads. The Mark I TX12 does not have the header pads. The Pocket has a 5-pin JST connector for its auxiliary channel. The MT12 Surface Radio has an AUX port on its main board via a 4-pin JST connector. Generally, the radios with JST connectors for the auxiliary ports seem to be a 1.25 pitch with either 4 or 5 pins. The Zorro is a little more tricky. The auxiliary pads are hidden under the ribbon cable on the main board and were originally put there for debugging, so there's no dedicated 5 volt pad. There's no 5 volt pad labelled on the main board either. Many thanks to AVI Physics on Discord for finding it. It's on the other side of the main board so it's a really tricky install. To make things easier you could just use an external 5 volt back. As for other radios, as long as they are able to run Edge TX with SBUS Trainer enabled and have an auxiliary port, the chances are that this will work. Once the wireless head tracker is completely set up, you can then bind your internal or external module to your model, depending on what method you have chosen for the head tracker, and then make fine adjustments in the radio to whatever your pan and tilt setup is. Now there's many reasons why having the head tracker go through the radio is better than direct to the model. The first one being the switch, which will center your camera and disable the head tracker if something goes wrong. But you can also go into the sub trim menu to get the perfect center point for the camera when the head tracker is disabled. You can also restrict the gains on say the tilt, for example on the bag gimbal, otherwise the servo can travel further than the mechanism allows and you can burn out your servo. I also made a video where you can modify a servo to get 270 degrees but if you go too far around with the gains it'll do a 360 turn and then your camera will just get wrapped up around all of the cables. So in the radio, you can restrict the gain and get that absolutely perfect. You can also do any channel reversing that you need to do without a computer or a flight controller. The HD Zero goggles uses the Express LRS backpack feature, which is great. However, it also bypasses the transmitter completely. And the only way to fine tune things and have an ODIA switch is to hook up a flight controller and adjust things in there, which is fiddly, requires a computer and requires a flight controller. And only two out of my nine planes have a flight controller because some of them are aerobatic and they just don't need a flight controller. So when the head tracking information goes through the transmitter, we can delete the need for a flight controller, especially with the air unit original and the Vista, which doesn't need a flight controller arm command to go full power. Whereas other systems like Walk Snail, DJI 03 and DJI 04 do. So you need a flight controller for those. The same goes for the Walksnail GM3 gimbal. It's the most simple solution for head tracking out there, but it's also just as restricted as the Express LRS backpack solution. Although I do believe in iNav now, there are Walksnail specific GM3 gimbal options, but again, you need a flight controller for that. I really hope Radio Master sees this and comes up with their own version of it because if I can do it and they can make all of these amazing radios then it should be something that's standard out of the box and it's something that has been standard in a way with the Bluetooth wireless trainer on the FRSky X9D 2019 series and that was 2019 and here we are in 2025 and it's just available now with some modding. Until then, 
we can use this method and it works brilliant. We've got the low latency of Express LRS and we've also got the range of Express LRS, although you shouldn't really be needing that when doing head tracking. Hopefully your goggles and your transmitter are fairly close together anyways. If you enjoyed this video, you can support me on Patreon or PayPal, which is linked in the video description. Cheers.